how do golf scrambles continue and what's the economic impact of scrambles having to do with less? No, I, I mean, I think that outings and, and large, you know, gatherings are going to take a, take a hit, especially early on here. Like Brian said, you know, all of our events in May and, and most of our events in June that had kind of a, a big gathering plus all the hotel groups um, that we had scheduled, you know, people taking golf trips and, and traveling and stuff like that are definitely um, getting hit with this for sure. But yeah, from the scrambles, like having 140 people all come for a two o'clock shotgun type of thing is kind of right in the target zone of what they're trying to avoid a mass gathering of people, a big group getting together, big group eating after, you know, and drinking. So I think that there's going to be some, some innovation maybe there in the golf industry on how to run an event and uh, do a charity or a fundraiser with uh, a lot of people that isn't in the normal kind of shotgun and dinner buffet uh, structure. Your charities that come out and run scrambles, I mean, that, those are huge fundraisers for those organizations. You know, it really depends. I mean, we have, you know, some events that, you know, make between five and 20, depending on how advantageous they are with sponsorships which I think is a big key. I mean, how comfortable are the organizers going to be to ask people and businesses for sponsorships? I think that that's, you know, probably a, a tough ask right now, you know, especially out of, out of the gate. Um, but anywhere upwards to, I mean, we do uh, an event called the Till Open, which is for the uh, Campfield schools. They take both golf courses. I think they raised 103,000 in one day last year. So, I mean, it's, you know, probably upwards to a million dollars when it's all said and done with, you know, the 60 some events that we are fortunate enough to host per year, if you add everything that they bring to the table. So, I mean, you got, you certainly have, you know, the, the takeaway from, are they going to be able to ask, are they going to be able to comfortably ask people and our businesses, do they have the means to be able to provide sponsorship opportunities to the events too? If we had a scramble tomorrow, um, the legendary M&M scramble happens tomorrow mm -hmm. out at Mill. Mike, I know you've been a great fan of the M&M &M as well. How do, you, how do we have a scramble tomorrow? Two bags, two in a car, one guy's walking? Uh, I mean, it, it's going to be part of it, maybe, but I, I still don't know how um, we get that many people kind of gathered around in a spot. And a lot of the, the big parts of the scramble is the, uh, the lunch before and the dinner afterwards and the ceremony and stuff. And there's just, you know, at this point and during phase one, probably into phase two from that kind of number standpoint, if you have 140 people, even in a pavilion, um, see kind of hard to, you know, separate them enough to be safe and, and be able to serve you in an outdoor, an outdoor tent, tent structure. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, six feet it, with a hundred people, you know, all standing six feet apart, it's a pretty big tent uh, yeah. if you can get them there, but still, I still think the social gathering side, when they hand out these phases, you know, they're going to jump in steps, 10, 50, I mean, 100, but golf scrambles are 140, you know, and Eminem, you know, well, you've seen the crowds and stuff for that. Plus, you add alcohol in the mix and keeping people separated at that point, it's just uh, probably kind of a, a, you know, socially thing, like you don't want to put people in a position where they get drunk and then just don't care about the rules.